After 14 months of leading the least popular government in the nation, New South Wales Premier Nathan Rees has been handed a lifeline by his party, giving him the power to oust the enemies in his midst and handpick his cabinet. It's the latest desperate bid by New South Wales Labor to try to shore up support for a government which, after 16 years of unbroken rule, appears headed for electoral annihilation. But after years of damaging scandals, internal brawling, will this last brave stand by a beleaguered Premier give Labor a faint whiff of hope? Deborah Cornwall reports. It's the longest running melodrama in the country. An overblown plotline of betrayal, scandal, even forbidden love. And that's just the cabinet ministers. They've provided us with a kind of rolling Shakespearean tragedy that uh, has also included uh, elements of romance and comedy. Several ministers have been caught with their pants down. It's 14 months since the factional warlords of New South Wales Labor did the unthinkable banishing the elected Premier Maurice Schiemmer to political oblivion. The unknown and untried Nathan Rees was installed in his place, promising a clean slate for a government on its last gasp. I will be giving you the effort you deserve. I will be having a red-hot go at fixing the problems in New South Wales. But saddled with a mutinous cabinet, treachery has dogged the Premier's leadership each new scandal prompting speculation of yet another leadership plot and a fresh round of internal brawling. The circumstances in which Mr Rees came to power have left the government demoralised uh, and, a, and has turned caucus into a set of warring tribes. This has meant that Mr Rees has never had a moment of, uh, of clear air in which to get the government moving forward. Delegates, would you be pleased to be upstanding and welcome the Premier of New South Wales, Nathan Rees, and his wife, Stacey. Squaring up to party delegates at the weekend state conference, Nathan Rees delivered an ultimatum, calling on the party to give him the power to hire and fire his own cabinet ministers and one last chance to save the government from certain oblivion. I do not ask this lightly. I simply stand before you, trusting that you understand what I seek and the reasons that I seek it. Within hours, Premier Rees had claimed the first two scalps. Primary Industries Minister Ian MacDonald, the main player in a leadership plot by former Health Minister John Della Bosca, before he was forced to resign in disgrace over an extramarital affair. And Finance Minister Joe Tripodi, until yesterday, one of the party's most powerful kingmakers and the man who backed Nathan Rees into the Premiership after turning on his mate, the former Premier, Maurice Schiemmer. My mother and father were migrants uh, from Italy. I never thought I'd be a member of parliament. I never thought I'd be a minister. So as far as I'm concerned, the way I judge myself is that I've achieved far more than anyone can expect from that, from that background. You look at the look on Joe Tripodi's face and you know that he's one of the guys that shoot him in that's wondering, Jesus, what have I done here, you know? So is this now the last reshuffle for the next election? Is yes, yes. We said that before, though. Yes, I know. Was axing Joe Tripodi <laughs> worth risking your job for? Was axing Joe Tripodi worth risking your job Ultimately, the community of New South Wales will decide that. Prime Minister Kevin Rudd has been quick to support the Premier. And I fully back it. Uh, fully back it. The state government is now so badly on the nose with voters, there's been growing alarm in Canberra over the fact the Rudd government will have to face the polls before New South Wales in 2011. I think all the Labor premiers around Australia would be saying, come on, you know, um, Kevin, get behind this bloke, give him, give him a chance. I mean, let's not have another period of instability, another change of leadership in New South Wales. Back this guy in, see if he can get it across the line. The Prime Minister is uh, terrified at what the desperately bad polling of Labor in New South Wales could do to his own success in outer Sydney marginals. The question really is whether with this desperate last roll of the dice, a crazy brave move, uh, that attempts to rebrand the government and uh, portray himself as both tough and principled, uh, Premier Rees can finally do what he's promised so often, again and again. Draw a line in the sand, brand new day, soap opera out, over. 
Deborah Cornwall reporting from Sydney. As the White House continues to